Hi there, welcome back. A while back ago I posted a poll on Facebook and YouTube asking if you wanted to see how I go into designing one of the items that I usually put into the greenhouse. And surprisingly it was an overwhelming yes, uh, very polarized actually. So this video we're going to do that and it may not be for everybody uh, but I hope you enjoy it. These videos are brought to you by our Patreon contributors. Our top contributors are TrueAquaponics.com, GlassBottleOutlet.com, GrowPockets.com, and our latest supporter, Aquaponics.ai. Thanks for your support. As many of you may know, in past videos I've covered many topics on strawberries. I've done the vertical towers, I've grown them in the media beds, and I've also grown them in the deep water culture beds. So I've done several videos on those and as you can tell I do enjoy growing the strawberries. A few years ago I came across a couple of videos on some large hanging troughs of strawberries and they're set up where they can be raised and lowered to uh, different elevations and allows you to walk underneath them and then lower them down and harvest. So we're going to try to reproduce that at a much more economical solution than what the commercial ones are available at. I'll start in with showing some of the initial diagrams and then go into the initial uh, component design. So a lot of these videos are going to be pieced together and hopefully they'll make some sense once we get to the end of this entire series. Track down my old CAD files of the hoop house and print out a couple of hoops just as my example. And what I want to do is somehow attach two pulleys to the existing cross member that I have and then going down from at each cross member uh, continue these pulleys going down and then have a, a bar that connects them all together. I'm just gonna draw them right over everything else. So that way that whole shaft will turn and then have uh, a cable going up and over each set of pulleys. So this is a, a cable. And then that cable will attach onto uh, some type of a trough or a basket. Like that. And then these troughs will go all the way down and connect to the other pulleys. So that way when you pull on this one to go down, that whole assembly will turn, which will then raise uh, this uh, basket up. And the aim is to keep this up overhead so somebody can walk underneath that. And while this one was down, you'll have somebody more at picking height that can uh, pick everything that's in here while this one is up overhead. And I think I have enough clearance. These are nine or nine and a half feet where I can raise that up and get this one down to maybe five or five and a half feet up. So it should be right at uh, a fairly good picking level. So I did a little bit of scrounging and my first thought on doing a solution is to hold everything up with these really cheap um, bearings. I can get these for about five dollars a piece on eBay or Amazon and um, they're nothing spectacular but I'm not doing any high speed turning with it. And then I'm really cheaping out and I'm thinking for the shaft to use a section of electrical conduit and this is a half inch electrical conduit and uh, this is only like four or five dollars per ten feet. The issue is that this is a three quarter inch or 0.75 inch bearing opening and this is 0.7 inches so I'm off by 50 thousandths so when this is in here it just uh, shakes around a bit and if I tighten up the screws on this it's gonna be riding off center um, normally I wouldn't really care about this if it's gonna be slow moving and not going to cause any problems but when I have a second pillow block next to this 
um, if they aren't perfectly aligned, it could be they could be tugging each other with the line uh, going between them. So what I'm going to do is take a piece of 25 thousandth shim stock. I bent it into a curve to meet the curvature of the bearing. And essentially, once the two set screws are in, it pushes against that and triangulates that piece of um, electrical conduit into the center of it. It's off just a hair. Um, I think once I tighten down these set screws, it'll push everything in. But for what I'm doing, this is going to go in the close enough category. This is my mock cross support in the greenhouse. So what I'll do is put a couple of U-bolts on there and suspend the bearing onto it. Use the flat part of these U-bolts to uh, go onto the ears of this bearing. You're looking at it from top view here, but if we rotate it, it's now has this suspended from the uh, cross support in the greenhouse. Of course, these will get tightened up nicely. I made up this pulley that has a 0.7 inch diameter center, so that should uh, mate exactly against the conduit. And then it also has this V shape to it, so the cable should sit in here and keep it from slipping out. So the entire thing, it's two identical halves, they go together and have some bolts in the middle. You can see this through the transparent. And when you clamp these or screw these together, it will clamp against the shaft and hopefully not spin on it. I'm certainly better at drawing in CAD than I am freehand, so this may be a little bit better example of what I'm attempting to do. Here is all of the uh, pulleys attached to these crossbars, and don't forget this is just a cross section of a small thing. These things would just keep extending down as long as I wanted them to. And so zooming in, here is the bearing attached to the cross member, and these U-bolts uh, will anchor that in. These are just some stock U-bolts that I grabbed off of uh, McMaster's site for the CAD file, so they won't be sitting up like this. This will all be anchored in nicely. So that holds onto the two ears of the bearing, and then the uh, pulley will be clamped to the uh, electrical conduit, which is then uh, transferring its weight into the uh, pulley. So overall, uh, this should not be bowing at all because all that weight is right in here and then getting transferred into the frame of the greenhouse. So I think it's a pretty good solution to um, get all these things interconnected without uh, having to rely on some heavy weight um, rods interconnecting everything together. Okay, so here's the first version of the pulley. Looks pretty good. I've already put the bolts into it to uh, make sure it all fit together. And basically it can fit right onto the, the piece of electrical conduit. And then I can tighten up the screws on these. Get it nice and tight. And that clamps right on. And I purposely left so there's just a little tiny gap with the design. Um, so there's, I think it was a half a millimeter or three quarters of a millimeter gap. So that way I could uh, crush it in, um, have all that um, force against the tubing itself and really not against the pulley. So that way it can, if there's any imperfections in this conduit, I can uh, get it to clamp on all the way. And that is on there. I cannot turn it at all. So I think uh, this particular design will work really well for um, holding on to that. And of course then the bearing will be right next to it like this. Okay, our first hang up with the project. I got some of this stainless steel aircraft wire, nice and flexible and it won't rot out. Um, it's rated for, I think it was 360 pounds. And so that's more than enough to support the weight of everything. And when I set it into the pulley, it just slips in here. 
um, and I need it to grab in. I was hoping that V-shape would really grab onto the uh, pulley, just sort of like how a regular belt would. But I think the stainless steel metal against the plastic, it just does not grab and keeps slipping over. So we're going to have to come up with a new plan on how we're going to engage our cabling with the pulley. After thinking about it for a few days, I thought I might try making a pulley that could fit a timing belt. Now these belts are very strong. They're used in CNC equipment and 3D printers, but the larger ones are designed for the CNC so they can handle a lot of weight. So I made up this uh, half pulley section with a lot of teeth in it. So when it's assembled, the uh, same thing, clamp against the pipe and uh, should get a little bit more bite out of it. This two-part pulley is an immediate fail. I wasn't thinking about it properly. There are a few imperfections with the 3D printing, so there's a, a gap here. Plus, if it's not clamped exactly right against the um, conduit, it leaves a little bit of a gap in the teeth, so the teeth spacing will be off here. So as the belt uh, goes into these teeth, it's just going to start skipping and hopping over these. Uh, so I can't do a, a two-part pulley with these. So now instead of having two halves, I've made this into one, uh, but now I can't clamp it to the electrical conduit. So I basically bored a hole through the whole thing, and that will have a bolt with a nut on the back side. And um, that pin going right through the electrical conduit would uh, keep it from spinning. So we'll uh, try this one out next. I'm not too sure about this pulley either with the teeth. It does engage with the uh, belt, but unless there's a lot of force against it, it will skip over the teeth. Uh, this style of belt does have rounded teeth, so it can uh, hop over things. And I think the weight against this, it's either going to start ripping the teeth apart uh, on the pulley or uh, keep skipping. So I'm going to maybe look into some other solutions. I have to think about this for a bit. Jumping back to my original pulley design, I had gone down to the greenhouse and was looking around and grabbed some of the paracord that I had used for the shade cloth project that I had done a while back. And this stuff is really strong. So I put it into the pulley and it does uh, grab substantially better than the steel cable did. And that's partly because the paracord is a little bit uh, flexible and can conform to, into that V shape. Plus it has a little bit of uh, texture to it, so it's uh, grabbing onto that pulley. But it's not quite exactly what I was hoping for. So then I made up this next pulley that's identical to the first one, but it has a few teeth built into it. And I'm hoping that will grab into the cord a little bit more. So that's substantially better with its grabbing. This one turns fairly easily and getting that into here it grabs fairly well especially if I have you know, 50 pounds of force pulling down on that it may uh, grab in pretty well so it's gonna take a little bit more thought on that I'm not overly thrilled about hanging all that weight off a of paracord um, so this is pretty strong I think it's rated for 300 and some odd pounds so if I did do something like this, uh, maybe I should invest in a slightly larger size of paracord. And then I started thinking about the pulley I had designed for the timing belt and made up this another pulley that has some sharper teeth on it and just have it sitting on here. Now this doesn't grab a whole lot, but I could also do an entire wrap around. It really would uh, be like a 270 degree wrap something like this where it's coming up in the bottom then around and then over to the other pulley and uh, I'll just do a like this and that has a lot of friction with it um, so that's another option that I could do if my timing belt idea doesn't uh, work out I'm back looking at the timing belt pulley this one is a three millimeter pitch versus the other one that's two so these teeth are a little bit bigger. I also set it up so that there's a set screw in it instead of driving a screw all the way through it. I wasn't overly thrilled about having to drill holes through all of the axle going through the whole system so I'm going to try out these two set screws. 
looking at the cross-section diagram of this, where we split this in half, the two screws just come down through a hole in here, and then there's a lock nut on here that sets into here, because these are going to be 3D printed. I can't really do threads in the plastic. They'll just rip out, so this lock nut will just anchor into here and allow the screw to uh, push itself into the conduit a little bit. Here it is all printed out. Inside the nuts are already set in place with the set screws in there. And it goes right onto the axle nicely. grabs on very nicely so that works just as well as doing a, a friction fit with clamping two pieces together this isn't going to go anywhere so this grabs really nicely we're going to continue our project with this and not use the paracord or the of course the steel cable so we'll try this out and do some more tests with it down in the greenhouse so now I'll put up a couple of these just to do a little bit more of a real world test see uh, how all this will work out Now I'm just going to hang this in here. I'm going to skip the middle one because I just want to test the ends where the pulleys are. Don't want to have to put all the bearings in quite yet. I'll just set the set screws into the axle. And this pulley should slide right on. This certainly goes in the don't try this at home category. I wanted to test out the system so I hung a couple of cinder blocks from them and wanted to pull it up and down. Threw in a couple pieces of conduit to mimic what the length of a trough would be. And they do move up and down uh, quite smoothly. I had to throw a partial, partial can of paint on here to mimic a little weight difference between the two blocks but overall pulling these up and down work really well so I think that's about enough for this video um, I have a lot more work to do to figure out a few other things I'll keep recording all that and we'll see you next time thanks for watching